Orange State uh, that will cover basically the areas in Ulster, Sutherland, and the Orange County, so, um, the summer camps and the schools that we'll spend for the next for nine weeks during the summer. So maybe we should have uh, some of uh, the Office of Homeland Security also participation um, as well as the list that we're putting together for all the sensitive locations. So, God forbid, in a uh, time of crisis, uh, everybody speaks together, comes to a certain location, and work together with the local uh, law enforcement. Lord um, Bradley? Um, well, this is the, some of the questions here was pertaining to upstate New York, where we have uh, over 150, 200,000 people, uh, depends on the summer, with uh, thousands of children in camps. Um, we're doing every year, we're putting together meetings with all law enforcement, which includes Rockland Orange and Ulster and Green and, uh, and Sullivan counties, with all the sheriffs and local police and state police. Uh, these meetings are going on for years, and I, I'm one of the uh, organizers of those meetings, is working for the state police in charge of community affairs for the state, and uh, working with Homeland Security in the state and uh, another uh, law enforcement. Uh, we have a system in the state police that we have the list of all the camps in the colonies that are upstate New York, which are being visited by state police and sheriff and local police organized to pay a visit, get the information from each camp on each colony, who's in charge, who's the owners, and what, how, if there is an emergency, what is the best way to get in there. I do get some briefings, which I get uh, from FBI and on certain locations there are upstate New York, which we look into, and to make sure that they are not a threat or not a, uh, a, uh, a problem for any communities. Thank God we are, in the last few years, doing okay. Because, we, again, we rely on the police and we see what great job they did now. I work on a state police headquarters, which is part of the Organized Crime Task Force, and uh, you can see the activities constantly going on, that everything is being monitored on a daily basis and every minute of the day. And, and I also want to thank Senator Adams. I mean, uh, luckily we had Chavez yesterday. If not, we would have had the meeting yesterday already. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I got the call Friday afternoon from Joe that the senator wants to have a meeting. Oh, I had a plan to go up to Canada, but uh, I felt that this is very, very important and to help them put together this meeting today and bring the leaders here. And I want to thank you because I believe there's three very important things in order for us to achieve what we need to. is communication, communication, communication. So when we have these three things and we talk and we're involved, everybody gets into the system and everybody helps out. So this is one of the most important things. So we do have a system of state and we're going to continue. With any help the Senate from Homeland Security itself or the state can give and, and monitoring those things, uh, we, we're definitely everybody appreciates that. But uh, we're going to continue having meetings, we're going to continue having sitting down, and we're going, to, we're going to monitor everything that goes on. It's just important that everybody should keep their eyes and ears open and see if there's any, anything they feel that should be looked at. So again, I want to thank everybody, the uh, State Homeland Security Director and the staff and the FBI and Senator Adams for putting together this meeting. Yeah, that's nice. I just, uh, thank you. My name is Sam Kabernet. I actually run one of the coordinators of the civilian patrol, the Barabak Shama, over the neighborhood. And I have my colleague Yanki Daskal there, and also the Williamsburg Shama, and Yanki Tsukis. So I felt more, and we just want to thank the Senator and Homeland Security, and specifically the NYPD, uh, the locals that are expected of Lazio. I mean, it's amazing the work, uh, work partnership over here that we have over here with all the locals and, and on all levels. And I just want to thank everybody again for putting this together and for the concerns. And uh, we are basically the eyes and ears of the police department doing uh, you know, the in-between, the liaison between the community and the police department. It's worth it for the we hope for further to go ahead with it and to be uh, updated and know exactly if there's any help we can give you. We have uh, all, all, over a hundred men force here working locally in the community. If there's anything we can do, just let us know. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi. Rabbi Kulens. Thanks. I was waiting for the opportunity. First of all, thanks, uh, Senator Eric Adams. Uh, you're unbelievable. You know, from when he became senator, he sounds like the senior senator. Of the senior uh, <laughs> thanks, senator. We're starting to with No, you don't stop. You don't stop. I don't know what's coming next. But thanks uh, for getting. I want to tell you something. I have been in public life for 35 years, 
This is an extremely impressive gathering at such a short notice. So it's thanks to a man who was from when he became senator, which is not long ago, and of course in his career as in the NYPD. You know, he was always on top of the game and has made sure that the community is a safe and sound. So thank, thank you. Thank you. And of course, Joe Leisdorfer, thanks uh, for putting it together today to give the opportunity. Uh, again, nobody's eating, so it must be something special. It's kosher. Uh, <laughs> uh, let, me, let me just, I don't want to bore anybody. Everybody has spoken already, and uh, of course, thanking everybody for giving us the opportunity uh, to come together and talk directly to the bosses and everybody else in all the law enforcement agencies. Uh, let me just, I want to make a statement and I want to ask one question. First of all, uh, we can't be smart enough, as we learn from all these things that are happening, terrorists always try to oversmart any plants. Uh, when we put concrete barriers on the floor, they come with airplanes, or whatever it is, uh, we know their minds are not our minds. If they would have had our minds, they wouldn't do what they're doing. They wouldn't plan what they're planning. So therefore, we can't rationalize in any way possible to think what they think. Uh, so we have to do we have to be very, very, very cautious about what we are doing. And by the way, a suggestion while we have everybody over here who has yeshivas, institutions, and so on and so forth, that even when you hire somebody to work, we never know how the information comes to the person uh, from the outside to target that particular place. We're never going to learn the real one. Uh, I think it's important <coughs> that we should make sure. Everybody who's hired to your yeshiva, and I'm also responsible for some of them, fingerprint them. Check a background before you take them in, before you trust them to enter your building. We can have bells till tomorrow. We can have video cameras. If we let them come in, these are the people who are going to walk in and out, and you never know what they're going to bring in and what they're going to take out and what information they're going to gather with everybody. So I would suggest anyway, and again, uh, I have heard in many ways that this is an important component, which we can do. And of course, <coughs> what Senator Adam said, that the police department has that kind of a situation where they come down to the school and they give you a lot of safety tips and it doesn't cost you money. Uh, I want to ask you a question, and I understand that we cannot elaborate on the investigation on what happened in the river <coughs> because it's an ongoing investigation. We know that. But is it a possibility that you should share with us just some points, which not necessarily about an individual, that you learn during all these course of an investigation, what we should be on the lookout, what we should do in addition to what we already know, not that we can be smart enough to do everything, but just to give us an idea of everything that is possible for us to be on the lookout and to really look, because the way we learned from this last incident, these are people that are from New York. They're not even Muslims that came from Al-Qaeda or anywhere else. They are people who are over here, they just might have, they became, uh, 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 they became subjects because they were in jail and they decided to become Muslim. They're not even a Muslim in the background. They only became a Muslim in jail. Uh, so it's something which is really making us more nervous, more vulnerable. We don't even know what to look for. We're talking about neighbors that might be of this culture, of that culture. We're talking about people that come from a totally different background and all of a sudden decided to do this. What points could you give from your experience, any of you, law enforcement, to us that we can take home from here? <clears throat> One thing that I would do, and actually I believe the uh, inspector had commented it on a bit, is that um, if you have security or if you do some type of security patrols, that they change. One of the things that we've seen in the past is that by having security, having any type of security, is a deterrent. Um, we know from past cases uh, that when the targeting individuals come over, the, su the subjects come over and look at locations, a place that does not have any type of patrol, have any type of security, uh, is something that they find more attractive than something with security. We know that if they see security uniforms, they see somebody who is security or local police out there, that they will deviate from that, even though that may be their number one pick. They, may de they will deviate from that to find something that's easier. Because the, the terrorists, they want to succeed. That is their goal. They don't want to come and do what they're doing and then fail. On this occasion, they believe that they, that they had succeeded. They had actually placed the, the bags in front of the temples with the uh, inert uh, IEDs. And again, I say inert. There was never any doubt that they, would, that they could not function. Um, however, uh, I don't believe that they saw any security. And they had actually done surveillance on those uh, two institutions on different occasions. And on those, on those occasions, they did not see any security out there. 
So it was a more attractive target. So that is one thing. The other is, if you have security, that you change up the security. You don't have a, as they call it, a fixed post. But they have a person at that point <coughs> all the time, always there. You can do a lot more by moving people around, having them walking around, changing times when people are there. The, the terrorists won't know when they're there, but you'll know when they're there. In other words, they'll be, they'll be in, they'll be out, they'll be moving around. Uh, cameras, the bell. Uh, a, a locked door is hard to get through. You know, an open door is very easy to get through. Uh, uh, if, you, if you lock the doors um, when, uh, and make it harder for somebody to come in, that's something that can easily be done to uh, inhibit uh, uh, terrorists from uh, targeting your institution. <coughs>